James, where are the doves? You had them. What? No, I gave them to you days ago. They're supposed to fly out as we got out of the car. I know, and I put them in the G-Wagon. Yeah, they're dead. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And no, despite what you just saw, we're not actually ballers. But if you had just hit 10 million Instagram followers, these are probably two of the cars you'd consider buying. And we actually asked you what you thought we should put the G-Wagon up against. And you said things like the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, a, a Model X, a Range Rover. You're all wrong. The new X7 is the answer. <clears throat> So, the X7, the SUV which can't help but get up all in your grill. Love it or hate it, this thing has presence. Two inches taller than its X5 sibling, it's also nine inches longer. It's a biggie, but with great size comes great comfortability. And comfortable this thing is. It has three spacious rows of seats to fit all the people, and you can propel those people pretty quickly with the aid of a 3-litre straight-six turbo that pushes out 335 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. And yes, while those numbers are a little slim next to that preposterous thing that Thomas is in, it's actually not that much slower in reality. Yes, James is right. The Mercedes-Benz G550 is preposterous. Rolling around town in a G-Wagon feels like using a sledgehammer to open a can of soup. It's excess in its purest form, and it's utterly awesome. And now, since it has been totally redesigned with independent front suspension instead of a solid front axle, it's actually nice to drive. So this is the G550. It has a 4-liter bi-turbo V8 thundering out 416 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque, crunching 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. And this is the slowest G-Wagon you can get. It has a 100-liter fuel tank and gets abysmal fuel economy. I averaged 18 liters per 100 kilometers this week. You can blame that boxy shape. But that means it comes into its own off-road. With a low-range gearbox and locking front, center, and rear diffs, this thing would tromp on the X7 over rocks and ruts. But since 99% of owners will never leave the tarmac, today we are going to see which one of these can be the pavement king. By the way, we promise we put a dollar in the swear jar for every time we say cars instead of trucks or SUVs. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so that you see our videos as soon as they come out. Also, if you want to see what we're filming before it goes live on YouTube, follow us on Instagram at The Throttle House. I try, attempted to pull off there, but I remembered that I was in low range. I'm in G mode for G-Wagon. Okay, let's put it back into neutral. Turn low range off. Diffs are not locked. Drive. And here we go. Okay, so like the X7, this is actually the base version. Right, that X7 has the smallest engine you can get. And this one has the smallest engine you can get. And it's a V8. And it has side pipes. That means the exhaust comes out the side of the car, which means I can hear it really, really well. <laughs> Power delivery is incredibly smooth and it feels substantial. All right, in the X7. Now this is powered by a straight six, right? So we've got 335 horsepower, 332 pound-feet of torque. This is the B58 motor. This is the one from the, the M240 we drove recently and loved. And the news is good. This is a very smooth power plant and I love it. Yes, you can get this in the 50, in the higher engine, but you don't really need it. Uh, going around town and, and driving even on the highway, this thing is so much pull and it actually pulls almost as fast, almost as fast as that G-Wagon, for $40,000 less. Okay, other things that have been changed actually is that the, the G-Wagon for a long time had recirculating ball steering and it was absolutely garbage. This has electronically assisted rack and pinion, and it is actually very good. All right, the steering has a really obvious on-center feel and the weight is, is very, very natural the way that it builds in the corner. And the rest of it feels like a truck, a very big, very top heavy truck. It, it feels like it's going to roll over in the corners a little bit. And this is the improved G-Wagon. 
fact, there's a little logo right here that says high rollover risk. I believe them. So the hood of the car actually goes up as you accelerate, very like Mustang GT style. Gives it a lot of character. And this thing's huge. It's massive. It's just like, it's like nearly 5,000 pounds in weight, not sterling. There's something to be said about being able to do 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour in like six seconds with six people in the car. And it sends all that power through an eight speed transmission, which is wonderful, absolutely brilliant. It stays completely out of your way and the shifts are lightning fast when you want them to be. Also, this has a new nine speed transmission, which is honestly very good. It stays completely out of your way, downshifts very quickly. I can shift it with the paddles. Coupled with the, the new steering and the new independent front suspension has made this just a really easy vehicle to drive every day. So the way that this thing rides over the road is very, it is very truck-like. It feels different and it feels special. The really lovely up and down motions you get, some side to side jostling. The ride is actually very soft and, and it's a very, very comfortable vehicle to drive in. A lot of wind noise on the highway though. So while elements of this might compare to a Jeep Wrangler, big body on frame kind of off-road vehicle, when you put your foot down and you hear that, there's a thunderstorm and then minced Jeep Wranglers come out the side pipes. This thing's bigger than the X5. It's longer than the G-Wagon, but not as tall. I bet that thing feels like a boat around the corners, but let's see how this does. Okay, around corners, which is not where this car is most at home. It feels really good. I feel very in control. There isn't even that much body roll. The steering's really light around town when you want it to be, but in sport mode, it adds enough weight that you feel really in control of the car. And again, I can't overstate the size of this. This is a big car to feel this much in control of. That said, in comfort mode, driving this around town, it has been the most wonderful cruiser and on the highway. It's super smooth. It soaks up bumps and undulations in the road. I, it's been a pleasure to drive this. And the NVH is amazing. Like, it's so quiet on the highway. There's like barely any wind noise. I'm on, I'm on snow tires right now and there's barely any tire noise. So I can only imagine how good it is on all seasons or summers. And recently with BMW's infotainment stuff, I've had an issue with the CarPlay. This has wireless CarPlay, which is still a rare thing among vehicles and I love it. I, and I've had no problems with it. Normally I have some problems with it. This has worked flawlessly and connected seamlessly. So I don't know about that X7, but the one undeniable thing that you get for all the extra money with this G-Wagon is road presence. Even people that don't know what it is go, that must be something special. And the people that do know what it is go, oh my God, it's a G-Wagon. It just thunders down the road and all eyes are on you. It's, it's a really neat experience to drive around in one of these. And you feel it from in here, actually. The, the, you see the headlights. When you turn the windscreen wipers on, you realize how vertical the windshield actually is. You feel up high. You feel like a king of the road. You get to look down on all the people that don't have live-in chefs at their house. But James has been going on and on all week about how much tech you get in that X7 and how luxurious it is. We'll see about that. And I don't know what Thomas's fuel economy is like, but I've been getting 12 liters per 100 kilometers, which in miles per gallon is. So whether you find things to nitpick about this car or not, this car feels luxury. I'm gonna go meet Thomas and we're gonna talk about the styling of both of these cars and what the interior offers, because I think he's going to be in big trouble. Ugh. All right. Wait, 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 listen. Oof. Oh, that's the best part. Here, come try this. Come try this. Come try this. All right, ready? Well, you, well, you got to say something angry before it. Like, like, fine, fine. Some styling has been changed on this car. So this reflector is different. This little headlight is different. Oh, this is, is the reflector different? It's wow. just, it, before it was like screwed on. This yeah, is, I was going to say, I didn't recognize this because the reflector looked different. And then I was like, oh wait, it's a G-Wagon. Okay, to be fair, it has not changed really at all overall. But These headlights are amazing. Is that a amazing. bad thing? No, it is not. Right? Because it looks unbelievably cool and, and this, instantly recognizable. This paint job's nice, I like this. This is $2,500. How much is this to wrap a car like this? It's like five grand. But yeah, but you wouldn't wrap the car this. I mean, it's very shiny, it's People nice. People wrap G-Wagons. They the absolutely time. do. I, I would do lime green. That's what I would do. Lime green? Yeah. yeah. Right? It's very cool, I like the exposed hinges. That is, if you don't like that, you're an idiot. These <laughs> wheels are absolutely fantastic and- They're okay. It's huge. Look how big yeah, it is. This is it's 77 inches high. I, I can't fit this in my garage. Speaking of things that are very big, yes. may we move to this? You, you know what? I got an E30 grill from a BMW 
and I put it next to this yesterday, and it is the same size. This hasn't changed in years. People think this is bigger. You have literal photo proof that they are ridiculously different. Yeah, okay, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. It's absolutely massive. <laughs> but to be fair, in person, it gives it a lot of presence. It does. And a lot of times you see photos of these people that use a wide angle lens and they've got up really close and it makes the grill look 16 feet tall. I'm guilty it's not, of that. It's only 15 feet tall. It's not actually. No, it's huge. I, I can't get it. It's weird. It's with but the otherwise, headlights. Otherwise, this just looks like an X5. Yeah. This separates it. And we've got the blue X5. Looks like an X5 that did this <laughs> <laughs> for just a second, right? Hey, these, this yeah. is about inflating themselves. Yes. Yeah, um, the, the laser headlights look fantastic. Laser headlights with the blue X's. This styling here looks really cool. It's a really imposing vehicle. It's you, definite, it fits beside the G Wagon. It honestly does. Let's look at the backs of these vehicles. Okay. Okay, and it's at this point you start to realize that this is, this is an SUV and this is a truck. This yeah, is well, one that looks like a this truck. This one works for you to do things. You just press buttons and you just, it's just easy. Oh wow, that's actually All right. really cool. There might be some giant fake tips here with an exhaust behind. Yeah, your exhaust also come on the back, that. mine come up the sides. All right, up. and then bring this down, hit max cargo space. Okay. And everything starts to move. Ooh. Right? They died. What? They died? <laughs> They're dead. Everything what? else is moving. Yo, that's so cool. And then you, if you hit max passenger space. Max passenger space. It recovers. It recovers. Yeah. Yo, that's really cool. Well, you got to flip these up. What, like a peasant? Yeah, yeah, like a peasant. And yeah, then this... uh, you press all this. Okay. okay. And there you go. Now, soft what, close, too. Want to see what mine does? The doors have soft close in this. The doors. Oh, the doors. Yeah, yeah mine have hard close. What's, I mean, what's hard close, Thomas? It, it's about like this. So this weighs 1,000 <laughs> pounds. This doesn't do anything fancy at all. It's just a fair amount of space that folds down. Yeah. Well, Want to see me slam the door, though? That's the best part. <laughs> Slamming doors. Feels Whoa. good, right? The, you can hear the, air, the air coming out That's where the air comes out. There's so much pressure. How wow. cool is that, right? Anyway. This uh, looks very, very, very special from the back. That looks like an X5 from the back. Yeah. So style points, that. overall, the G-Wagon wins. Yeah, it's the more yep. special looking car. Yes. Uh, let's do the interior of it, though. Oh my, the reverberation of closing so the so manly. It's so loud in it's here. It's so good. Okay, wow, but this is a much nicer interior than the outside suggests. Yeah, I know. It's been completely updated. So all of Mercedes' current tech is in here, right? We've got the, the steering wheel with little thumb things on it, right? I can navigate through my screens. It's all digital. This is huge, and it's lovely. And the ambient lighting in here is so good. It, like, comes around the outsides of that. This has a really expensive interior package, which gets you some of the pretty stuff that you see here, right? This is lovely as well. Very minimal piano black, honestly. Like, this is really, really good. This yeah. is wood here, too. Here is piano black, but you barely touch it. The seats are awesome. They're and very they, bolstered. They are actually, and I got squishy headrests. Um, now this is the most amount of headroom I have ever seen in a vehicle. There's a lot. It's you could, insane. You, you could wear very pretty hats. You really, really could. You fine. could, yeah. You could wear like a pith helmet. Yeah, but it's not quite Marge Simpson level. Not quite that no. level. Is anything though a convertible? A convertible. Yeah. yeah um, so she loves her. Energy. Burmeister sound system is incredible. Honestly, this interior, the G wagon interior, for a while was behind. Now this year. This is as good as any Mercedes interior. It feels, yeah, it feels exactly like the normal Mercedes. It feels Mercedes. absolutely perfectly premium, and it it completely fits the character of the car, right? Let's look at the back seats actually, because they are pretty cool. All right. Oh, so uh, loud. All right, and I say that they're really cool actually because they they feel like jump seats, but they're really comfortable. They are comfortable. Honestly, like the yeah. seat, like this, the bottom part is really soft. Actually, we have real cup holders back here now, which is nice. For a while, the G-Wagon didn't have anything close to real cup holders. There's not all. a million years of legroom for an no, SUV. No, but there's enough. There's enough. I, I've got heated seats. Well, the headroom's absurd as well. It's huge. It just goes up for miles and miles. And the entire headliner is Alcantara. And it is absolutely mm. lovely. And you can control the uh, climate here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's got three-zone climate. Three-zone climate, yes. Is a three is one of my least favorite prime numbers when it comes to climate control. I'm more of a five type of guy. That, that's... Something tells me there's going to be five zone climate in the uh, X7. Yep. Um, other than that, really, though, this is this, there's not much else going on here. It's simple. You're in the it's back of a G-Wagon. That's the most important thing. <laughs> exactly. You are in the back of a yeah, G-Wagon. G that sentence, period. Yeah. Uh, X7, though? Be afraid. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why slam a door when you have soft close? Just lean it against and it does all the work. Huh. Right? Okay. Calm. We it's live a calm, calm life in this X7. Yes, yes. And this also, is nice. This is nice. A nice life, yeah. This I is like this it's spacious. I like the wood. You know, 
Yeah. Plenty Whoa. of headroom. Actually, there's quite a lot of headroom, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So this has three rows. Yes, it does. Very comfortable. This is the this is in the six seat setup. You can get a bench. These yeah. These are the captain seats. Okay. Which is pretty cool. I don't know yeah. how everyone could be a captain. I guess people fight over that. <laughs> uh, otherwise, otherwise it's the exact same interior as every other BMW right now. No, no, no. no. So these seats it are is. really comfortable. Okay, um, cool. okay. Steering wheel, three series, eight series. It, every BMW is going to have that exact. It's a lovely steering wheel. Yes. But it's the same one. It is the Gauge same. Gauge cluster one. is exactly the same. Yep. Infotainment is. I think it's a little bit bigger in this, but it's exactly the same. This is from the M850i. This well, is from the, M850i. the M850i had an eight here. This has an X. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, if you go back to like 2008 and you look at all the different BMW interiors, like from the from the Z4, which there's a shared steering wheel with us, to the the eight series or to the six series and, and the three series, they all had different interiors in the steering wheels. BMW is just putting the same stuff in every car. But is that a compliment to the to like what the three series has? Are they all amazing? Or are they all? No. They're, well, they're all decent. I'll give them that. I'll give them all decent. It's okay. So this is equipped with a fifteen thousand dollar premium excellence package. Premium and excellence. Yes. <laughs> yes. Same with the captain's chairs. You feel like okay. you've just been invited to the captain's deck on a cruise. Okay. Ship. Does that mean that I have? I do have massage sheets, don't I? Do have massage sheets. And the sunroof has LEDs, which light up at night, makes you feel like you're in a limousine. That's actually kind of cool. Got a suede headline. Is it whole... tacky or is it cool? No, it's cool. Suede headliner all the way, just like the, in between. just like the G wagon, just it's, like the G wagon. It's tackle. <laughs> um, uh, I have lots of space up here, and these seats are so right? good. Right, the wood grain. This mirror is still, and I complained about it in the eight series. Yeah, yeah. So this has the Hey BMW function, just like the other ones that we've tested. This does, but it doesn't have the assistance, the full assistance yet. But that will be an over-the-air update. So that's like a, it's free software update. Okay, but it's, so it's but, coming. But I can say it right now, and it will work. Hey BMW. It worked! It worked! It even says on the heads up display. Can I get a burger? No, it doesn't have that yet. It doesn't, oh. Don't listen! <laughs> it doesn't have the full assistance yet. That's okay. going to be okay, an okay, over-the-air okay. update. And perhaps more importantly, we have dynamic air suspension thing where oh. we can raise and lower the car just with this button. Oh, I see. And it's a 3.1 inch. Are we going up and down to you right now? We are. We're going down. Bye-bye. We're going down. Yeah, and... That's and cool. That, so you can lower it for like luggage and old people. And, do, and, and old then, people? <laughs> and when, you, when you throw them in the back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you can raise it uh, for off-roading. This has cooled cup holders. And heated. And heated. Yeah. Oh my God. This is just yeah. got... That's, that's perfect for when you have a cup of ice cream and meatballs. <laughs> yeah. Side by side? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Honestly, there's some really good tech in here. <laughs> and at a discount to that G-Wagon. How much discount? $40,000. $40,000. You could buy this and a Golf R. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back seats. Let's go look. Well, it's All easier right. to get in the G wagon, that's for sure. Welcome, oh. welcome to the back seats. Yo, these, these are still so like good. the front seats. They literally, they you feel like front seats in most cars. Yeah. Better than front seats in most cars, easily. Plenty of room. You got USB chargers. There, there is an option. You can get an infotainment package. Yes. An entertainment package with screens. So here's the the next two climate control areas. Okay. Should As you, we move to the you back. You should be so lucky. Yeah. Oh my God, these seats are so. These cool. are the captain's chairs. Wow. Um, he, he, he's he's fine. He's not mad about it. And then the wood grain, the, the wood grain, <laughs> the wood grain. Um, and these uh, put the blind up. You have a blind on this window, don't we you? We do. Yeah. Well, I need my privacy, so I don't got to look at G wagons all day. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's go in the back. Back. I just push this button to get back here. Oh wow! There's actually a lot of space to get in here. Right. Wow. Oh look, even these have anchors to show where the baby's thing's going because it's the captain's seats. Because it's the captain's seats. There's, there's a very naval theme here. <laughs> there, yeah. I have my own sunroof back here and my own climate control. Yes. That is ridiculous. That's the fifth, the fifth, the climate. fifth climate control. There we go, just get we some shade. Oh, Need nice. some privacy from the sun. You know, even these seats are comfortable. Yeah. This is just nuts. What, this thing? what a cruiser this is. And you'll find out when you drive this how comfortable it is to go. Thomas, Thomas broke the BMW. <laughs> yeah, this is legit. I can't be It's amazing. This is one of those cars where like someone says, dibs not back seat, and you don't care. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Okay, I actually really want to drive this right now. Do it. Can we do that? Yep. Let's do it. All right. In the X7, this is a really big vehicle, and it feels big from in here. But what I can tell you immediately after driving it for three seconds, that it doesn't feel like the G-Wagon. It doesn't feel like a truck. It just feels like a mid-size SUV. All right, we're gonna put it in sport mode and chuck it around some corners. Steering weights up immediately. <laughs> it's 
honestly, really, really well controlled body. Good damping. Good, wow. Yeah, no, honestly, this is a really, really easy car. I feel like I could drive it fast. The G-Wagon, you don't get that level of confidence. You feel like, oh, it better not go too quick in this corner. This one, I feel like I could just toss it in. All right, in the G-Wagon. The locks in this car, everything about this car is mechanical. It's like, it's like in prison. Every door has to slam shut or you know, close cell six. This thing's ridiculous. It's not all just slamming noises because when you floor it, the V8 sings. That's cool. That's really cool. I love that sound. I can only imagine what a V12 G-Wagon is like. And I, people brab us these things as well because insanity. All right, taking it into the corners, we've got to do a few of these. Oh my God. This thing feels as high as it is. I feel like there's a school bus in there. It pulls though. Talk for days. Second gear. On the upshift, that sounds good. <laughs> it feels like a BMW. BMW is really, really good at making all their cars across the line have a BMW-ness to them. And this is absolutely no exception. Yes, like the nose comes up, the suspension feels more wallowy than a 3 Series, obviously, but it definitely feels like a sporty large SUV, but still comfortable. Immediate impressions are I'm much more aware of undulations in the road. The wind noise, even at low speeds, is quite loud. Even with that new independent front suspension, this still feels like a truck. But on the inside, as Thomas and I just discussed, it is beautiful. It does feel like S-Class level stuff, which is amazing to have this kind of ride and off-road capabilities and that sort of interior. And that is what is so awesome about this truck. Okay, conclusion. I don't know which one of these I would buy. Truth be told, I would never buy either. However, I think that since I would never buy, I, I've no need for this many seats in an SUV, I think I would probably somehow, unrealistically, find a way to get the extra money to get the G-Wagon. Just because it's, it's a G-Wagon. This is not a G-Wagon, it's an X7. It's not as cool at all. So since I don't need the car for any form of utility, I would get a G-Wagon, because it's ridiculous and awesome. This is the more logical choice then I want to be silly. And Thomas has probably said this has a road presence like no other. You know, not until you get to supercars do you get to have a road presence like this does. And I think that's what makes it so special. For the money, the X7, I think, gives you a better package and, and, and modernity and technology. But if you did just drop the hottest album of 2019 and you did want to take your bandmates and groupies into California and Joshua Tree and go tripping in the desert, this has off-road capability. So, you know, it's up to you. I'd take the X7 though, because I'm a boring sod. So without question, both of these are excellent at what they do. If you want comfort, space and practicality all wrapped up in a luxury package, then it's the X7. If you want a snippet of all of those things, and to be in one of the most unique looking vehicles on the road, then it's the G-Wagon. Either way, if you're looking at buying one of these, Thomas and I are jealous. And if you pick the G-Wagon, let us know where to find you on Apple Music.